I'm constantly being told that to believe in markets is to believe in selfishness and greed. Yet I think the very opposite is true. The more people are immersed in markets, the more they collaborate, the more they share, the more they work for each other. In a fascinating series of experiments, <coughs> Joe Henrik and his colleagues showed that people play, who play ultimatum games, that is to say, this game invented by economists to try and bring out selfishness and cooperation, they play them more selfishly in more isolated and self-sufficient hunter-gatherer societies and less so <coughs> in more market-integrated societies. History shows that market-oriented, bottom-up societies are kinder, gentler, less likely to go to war, more likely to look after their poor, more likely to patronise the arts, more likely to look after the environment than societies run by the state. Hong Kong versus Mao's China, 16th century Holland versus Louis XIV's France, 20th century America versus Stalin's Russia, the ancient Greeks versus the ancient Egyptians, the Italian city-states versus the Italian papal states, South Korea versus North Korea, even today's America versus today's France, and so on. Example after example <laughs> of what Montesquieu called le doux commerce. As Voltaire said, go into the London Stock Exchange and you will see representatives of all nations gathered there for the service of mankind. There the Jew, the Mohammedan and the Christian deal with each other as if they were of the same religion and give the name of infidel only to those who go bankrupt. <laughs> so as Deirdre McCloskey reminds us, we must not slip into apologising for markets, for saying that they are necessary despite their cruelties. We should embrace them precisely because they make people less selfish and they make life more collective, less individualistic. 